thank you very much uh, for coming back uh, after the lunch. Uh, and also, thank you for coming. I know it's, there's a storm this morning, and um, yeah, it, it was a bit rough. But uh, thank you so much for, for, for coming here. And thank you uh, for in, inviting me to um, PyCon France. Uh, it's my first PyCon France. So um, yeah, so this is uh, my, my talk about the role of 21st century um, technology in protest. Um, so let me introduce myself, first of all. Um, I'm Chuck, or my friend call me Cherry. Um, I am the co-organizer of uh, Python Sprints. Uh, we have a London chapter. We do uh, sprints um, regularly. So if you want to know more, you can talk to me. I also do um, uh, meet up for inclusion and diversity, and also contribute to open source, of course. Uh, I have my own um, library that I'm maintaining. It's called Pick and Mix. Um, also, I volunteer for um, the diversity program uh, in Nonfocus. So that's me. And one more fun, not fun fact, but one more fact about me. Uh, I am now uh, living in London, uh, UK, but I grew up in Hong Kong. So uh, this talk would be uh, related to a lot of things uh, happening in Hong Kong. So uh, if you feel that it's very sensitive or you feel that not comfortable listening to this, uh, you, you, you feel free to uh, leave the room. It's OK. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I want to tell you what happened. Uh, maybe you have already read it in the news. So. Um, this year, in June, uh, in the summertime, uh, there was a, extra, a bill about extradition law that um, the government is trying to, um, to, uh, to have it happening in Hong Kong. And it's very controversial because people think that it's actually easy to send Hong Kong residents to be trialed in China. And this will really hurt the, um, you know, the democracy in Hong Kong and also the, the legal protection for Hong people in Hong Kong. Um, so it really um, ripples uh, among the public. And in early June, there was uh, one million Hong Kong citizens was marching in the street to protest to say that they don't want this law. Uh, uh, by the way, so the population in Hong Kong is um, 7 million, um, close to 8 million. So it's almost um, one seventh or one eighth of the population was uh, marching. Uh, the government didn't, um, you know, just take, take back. They didn't re withdraw the, the, the bill. So um, even though the chief executive, she was like, oh, we are just like, you know, um, extending. We may not, you know, it's, it's not uh, very certain that uh, she got to withdraw it. So a week later, there's a two million, it's double the number, two million citizens was marching again in a peaceful manner. At the beginning, everything was very peaceful. Um, also, they tried to raise attention in t internationally. So the crowdfunding for campaigns, so maybe you have already seen uh, this. I think there's a French version as well. I uh, in the newspaper uh, during the G20 summit uh, about what's happening in Hong Kong and we need um, more attention from the um, the, the citizen in the in different countries. Um, of course, the first of July. Uh, this is usually what happened is like an anniversary of the handover of Hong Kong from um, British to China. And um, instead of a celebration, there are like um, hundreds of thousands of citizens um, protesting again. Um, it's uh, it's, a, it's a regular thing that you know, people express their um, opinions towards the government during that time. But this year, of course, uh, the tension is higher. Uh, so um, there are other groups that you know, break into the legislative building. Um, and I remember there was a, 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 some written uh, some word was, you know, there was graffiti inside a building. Um, and there's one uh, slogan that they're saying is like, it's you, which is addressing Carrie Lam. Teach me that uh, marching peacefully is useless. So, um, and it's a bad sign that things may escalate. So, um, but in the meantime, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of the protesters, they're still, you know, trying different ways of like avoiding, um, you know, escalating the things in a, in a, in a violence level. They are doing this. Uh, do you know what this is? <laughs> no. Uh, this is... Uh, called Lennon War. Um, do you know who is John Lennon? 
Yes, <laughs> yeah, John Lennon, uh, of course, a famous singer. Um, he's kind of like an icon for peace uh, and freedom. So uh, there was a war. It originated in uh, Plague in uh, um, you know, uh, and then in people in Hong Kong, they they have these um, take the the spirit of it and build a war. And also the picture below is uh, actually a tunnel. So it's like they call it Linen Tunnel. So it's being creative. Um, also they. Uh, they um, was doing this, like human chain uh, because it's a it's an inspiration from uh, what happened in uh, for the for the um, for the there's a, a you know in um, uh, the Baltic countries they have these um, uh, uh, before so it's kind of like having the same spirit of fighting for freedom and then um, people you know holding hands and um, you can see students keep doing it as well so it's a very peaceful thing. Um, also um, there's um, singing, <laughs> why, what happened. Um, so this is, uh, this, uh, there's a composer in Hong Kong, he um, made a song. He made a song about, um, uh, you know, all the, the protests and all these, so um, people jokingly call it the national anthem of Hong Kong. Well, it's, it's a controversial name, but um, people love this song, obviously, and they sing it in shopping malls and all these. So uh, if you are curious, you can actually find it on YouTube. It's uh, called Glory to Hong Kong. So, yeah. So people have spoken, um, like at least uh, most of them are peaceful. Uh, there's occasional violence, um, but, but how does the government react? Um, uh, then it comes to the police brutality. Um, uh, there's very uh, lots of um, sad incidents reported. Uh, there's on the 11th of uh, August. Uh, there, uh, there's like because uh, uh, like police they try to um, uh, control the the situation and they f uh, fire a lot of uh, bean bags. And then there was a round that uh, rapture a young woman's eye. So these people are protesting because. They feel angry about it because that young woman, she's just a first aider. She's trying to um, help the injured during the, you know, the protest, and she was shot and uh, obviously really um, injured uh, her severely. Um, also, uh, uh, first of October is a is a national day for China, and of course, uh, there there is a massive uh, protest in Hong Kong and. Um, the first uh, live round was shot, and there was a, a young man, uh, 15 years old, was shot in the chest. Uh, it's like the, the bullet was 3 cm next to the heart, so it's, it's very, um, of course, a severe injured. And he was, at the time, the police report that he was uh, holding some um, lethal weapon, but actually, in fact, there's a footage and also pictures show that he's only holding some plastic you know, tube and, you know, uh, a, a plastic, you know, shield that's homemade is, is not a lethal weapon. So um, people get angry about it. Uh, those are the statistics you can see at the bottom is uh, as of the 1st of October. You can see the, um, it's, the, it's a very long um, protest. It's more than 100 days. And now it's, of course, uh, 30 days more. Um, and uh, there's lots of people got arrested. A lot of them are very young. Uh, the youngest, I think, is maybe 12 years old, very young. Um, and lots of people severely injured. There are speculation that um, you know the, there's some um, people died during the um, the protest, and of, of course the the police brutality. But uh, violence doesn't solve a lot of problems. Most people believe that violence is not a solution. But what should we do? How can we protect ourselves? And how can we kind of um, voice out, even though you know, um, there's uh, a lot of control from the government? So I would describe it as a technology war, because uh, it's kind of reported that the protesters in Hong Kong are quite creative and, cre and clever. Um, so let's, let's check uh, who have this app in their phone. So uh, raise your hand if you have that app, Uber. Yep, it's a popular app. I, I use that a lot as well. I, I got to use it, I think, uh, when I go to the airport. Um, Telegram. Yes, yeah, because we have a group, right? So uh, yeah, join the Telegram group. Um, Tinder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK, I think maybe, maybe people are like, I have Tinder, but I'm not going to tell you. OK. <laughs> um, Pokemon Go. Yay, it's a fun game. I love that game, yeah. So um, yeah, you have those. but. Well, 
what, what are they going to be related to the protest? Like, what they are just, you know, app that I use. Um, actually, there's a lot of things going on uh, with the technology and online. For example, uh, if you have a, like me, if you have an iPhone, uh, you know that there's AirDrop that you can send documents and files or pictures to your friends um, next to you. So, um, so people in Hong Kong think that, oh, they can maybe make some, you know, political message in, in a picture and then send it to the people, let's say if you're in a, in a, in a, in a bus or in a metro or in a train, then they can send it to the, peop the strangers next to them. Um, they may be, um, they may be, you know, Chinese tourists. Then they can kind of um, pass the message, you know, um, through this airdrop because, well, it's not easy to pass a message to mainland China because of the, uh, the, you know, the Great Firewall of China. So it's difficult. Uh, so Tinder, haha, <laughs> Tinder, you can actually, um, you can write about yourself in your profile, right? Um, so people put a political message in their profile. So kind of disguise it as a, you know, looking for dates, but actually they are spreading the message. So, um, well, if you're an attractive woman or man or, or a person, attractive person, then um, yeah, maybe people will look at your profile and see the message. Um, also, there's uh, 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 an online forum that uh, people discuss about um, what they're going to do next. Because uh, we describe this um, protest as a decentralized movement, there's no leader. So it's kind of everybody was just like voting what they want to do next and just kind of um, they have this idea and like ask people to join them. So they have this uh, online forum called LIHKG, um, but it's mainly in Cantonese. Of course, I have no problem seeing it because I speak Cantonese, uh, but it's difficult for people who don't speak Cantonese. So, um, so they're now starting to move to Reddit. Uh, so there are some um, got translated and uh, actually reposted on Reddit. Um, I think it's something called r slash Hong Kong. Um, and there's the link. I will share the slides later. So if you're curious, you can click on it to check. Um, also, Telegram. Why they use Telegram over WhatsApp? Uh, because for Telegram, um, actually the default is not having encryption, but um, you have the option to choose it to be encrypted. And also, you can have a group chat with lots of people. Really a lot. I think it's like 20,000 or something. So it's really big. Uh, and also, because um, if you, uh, like a lot of you use Telegram, so you can actually set up a username and then to hide your phone number. So it's, if you um, want to, you know, hide your identity, you can just, you know, change your username and then delete all the chat message. So if someone check on your phone that they know that, um, oh, I'm not in the group, you know, I've never said anything that, you know, is related to protest. So you can hide your identity. Um, uh, anybody know what this is? Twitch. Yes, Twitch. Um, Twitch is popular for streaming video games. Um, but now, recently, um, protesters know that you know you can stream um, the protest because um, some media's in Hong Kong they are censored. So they we try to report things that is the government you know would like people to see. So. Um, Twitch is more like, because uh, everybody can Twitch, um, so it's kind of like, you know, s uh, telling the truth to the public and also recording it, put things on camera. So um, a lot of these like poli police brutality is not made up. There, there's something that, of course, is, you know, rumors and stuff, but a lot of them is filmed, um, uh, video filmed, so you can see that they're actually hitting the protesters, you know, in open eyes. Um, so who have heard about Bridgified? Yep, some of you. So um, I didn't know about Bridgify until the, the, the protest. Um, so actually, it's kind of like an internet with Bluetooth. So you don't actually need a 4G signal or um, any you know, Wi-Fi to, um, to connect to each other. So it will uh, let user, like for example, I'm here, I have my phone, um, and I want to um, Let's say send a message to you at the back, and then, um, but let's say you're not at, like, my Bluetooth can't reach you to a step four. My Bluetooth is a bit, you know, just maybe the first three rows. But um, with Bridgeify, it can jump from people sitting in the first three rows and then to the people who are in, like, the next couple of rows and then reach the pe people at the back. 
So, um, because uh, in a crowded place, have, have you been to a very crowded place and you get like a very bad signal, you can't send a message and you got really annoyed? With Bridgeify, it's not, you know, it won't bother you at all because you just use your Bluetooth. <coughs> also, for Uber, uh, Uber, you can, you know, well, you can call, uh, you know, call a taxi, you know, call a cab, so uh, get a ride. Usually, you pay for it, like, um, you know, like a taxi. But, um, but actually, some people um, discover that they can use the app. You know, they are the volunteer driver, and then they can see where the protesters need to get get away, you know, quickly, so to avoid uh, the arrest. And they would post, like, you know. You know, register as a driver and like you know, offer free ride, but um, there's another side because now the police discovered that, and they are disguised as the volunteer driver, and they arrest the protester, you know, on the on the ride. You know, so it's uh, so they stop using it now. Pokemon Go. <laughs> so uh, Pokemon Go, um, what do they do is like because um, some uh, protests in Hong Kong uh, deemed illegal gathering. Um, illegal assembly um, because uh, if you want to march, of course uh, you have to apply for the police and then you need to, you know, uh, give an, uh, a document saying that you can um, march and protest on the day from when to when. Um, but uh, of course now, because of the situation, a lot of the, you know, the protests are not granted. They they can't do that. Basically, the police tell them you can't do it. If you do it, it's illegal. So um, protested was like try to be creative, saying like, "Oh, there's a very rare Pokemon in that area. Let's go catch it." And they said that they are playing the game instead of joining the protest. Um, so uh, besides all those apps that we know and use every day, um, there's also some new apps uh, that. Uh, people in Hong Kong made to uh, kind of in the spirit of aiding the protest in some way. Um, for example, this one uh, is called WhatsApp. So it claims that it's suggesting restaurant um, that you know uh, is supporting protesters. So protesters should like um, people who support the protesters should eat in those restaurants instead of those who um, who is you know uh, pro government. So now it's like, if you go out to eat, you have to check whether the restaurant is pro-government or pro-protester. So uh, yeah, so now, now that's, the, the, that's the thing in Hong Kong, you have to check. Um, and also, they have suggestion for weekend activities. Hmm, hmm, weekend activities. Um, yeah. Also, there's a game, it's not out yet. Uh, it's in development, it's a VR game. It's, it's, a game that puts you in the front line of the Hong Kong protests. So I ha I've never, never tried this before because uh, it's not released. Um, and it says they claim that it would help the awareness and kind of help people em empathizing with the protesters. Um, well, they made a game. It's quite, um, never thought about that. We can make a game, okay. Um, and also this one, I really want to show this one. Um, uh, th this video is just, uh, I, I got to show a little bit because it's a, uh, a demo of how this works. So somebody made an app, uh, which uh, is called a uh, robot for paying tax. So um, what happened, the background is that um, in Hong Kong, there's this uh, online payment system called PPS. And this system actually charged um, two Hong Kong dollars for each transaction. So if you pay tax, you can actually choose to pay what you have to pay in one transaction, or you can pay it dollar by dollar. So <laughs> somebody, because like, well, if you have to pay, let's say, um, 10,000 Hong Kong dollars, you know, you, you have to click it so many times, which is very tedious, and you may made a mistake. So somebody made this auto click app to, um, to, to pay it, you know, um, automatically. And it works, actually. They made the government system was down. Oop, sorry. <laughs> okay. I can't stop. I can't stop it. Sorry, you have to like listen to the music. <laughs> because it's not my computer. I don't know how to stop it. But anyway, um, yeah. So you can see the demo. So now it's like auto clicking. 
and you can see all these are transactions. So it's like only paying ten dollars, and you can see all these like transactions there. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, this company, uh, this actually, by the way, this PPS is owned by um, a company called PCCW, um, and they're, they're you know the 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 big boss, you know the the owner is a he's also you know. He's not pro-government, at least, I would say. Um, so, yeah, so he, I think he earns a lot of money because of that. Because if you pay $10,000, actually the government doesn't get your $10,000 and pay $10,000 to this company. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, other than that, also, um, th they have to, because like the protester, as you are so aware of all this technology thing, you also worry that using technology could also do you harm. For example, um, at the beginning of the, 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 all these like, protests, and then because um, they're trying to go home after, of course, everybody have to go home, right? So um, they decided to not use their travel card to uh, pay for the journey back home because um, if the police, they want to trace, they can trace that you have been there at that time. So they would buy a single ticket, so you can see all these people queuing up to buy a single ticket to go home. Um, and also, um, because in Hong Kong we have those uh, new smart ID card, it's kind of like you're contactless, so um, if somebody got the right device, actually can get all your information without you showing the card, they can be just like, you know, swipe, like if your card is nearby, then they can get your like, identity and all this information. So they cover this smart ID card with um, aluminum foil, so kind of like you know, covering the signals. Um, also, um, use burner phones because um, uh, there was a, a period that you know if you go to work in um, mainland China, then um, all the all the people at the border they would check your phone to see whether you have um, you know whether you post something on social media to support the protests or say something bad about the government. So they use these burner phones to, you know, in case uh, they have to show their phone, or if they got arrested by the police, they want to cover all this conversation with their comrades. So um, they use uh, another phone, maybe a, a cheap Nokia <laughs> free, like for thirty one hundred, you know, that doesn't have any apps on it, so uh, to cover identity, and also with another um, SIM card as well. So. Uh, there are not lots of technology involved. A lot of them are being creative, but um, of course, uh, the other side, you know, the government, they have money, they have power, and they can watch people. Um, for example, uh, have, maybe you have heard about that. Uh, China's surveillance system is one of the most advanced in the world. Um, it's like a face detection. They can detect your face everywhere. Um, actually, uh, this picture, actually, um, there's a link towards a video uh, by the BBC. Um, I would you know, share the slides afterwards, uh, but you can watch it. It's five minutes, so it's quite long. I'm not going to pay it now. But um, you can see that uh, they have to do a test, and then basically that uh, reporter, he just stepped out from the security control, and then within seven minutes, then they can you know, spot him and find him where he is. If he's a suspect, they can get him. So you're being watched. And also, they have these um, social credit system. Uh, yeah, you can actually be banned for travel if you have a low score. Your kids may not be, maybe like they can ban your kids to be admitted in a good school because you have low score. Um, also, your social status can be affected. Um, like, for example, on, on dating app, uh, on a dating site, if you have a low score, nobody's going to match with you. That's very scary, yeah? <laughs> um, also, you, maybe like, uh, when you want to ap apply a loan, then you know, it won't be granted. Uh, the worst thing is you may be ashamed by the public because they will put you on display. But it's not perfect. So what happened to this poor lady? Um, She's actually a businesswoman. Um, she, of course, being a CEO or somebody very high up in a company, uh, she made a picture in advertisement, so her face is on a bus. Uh, but when this bus passed a crossing um, somewhere near um, Shanghai, I believe, um, the camera picked it up and think that she jailwalk. 
So she was, so this is a billboard that is like shaming her for jailwalking, um, but actually, of course, she never visit that crossing because it's only a face on the bus. So yeah. And they are also trying to um, monitor the kids at school. They claim that uh, it's helped them to concentrate because um, this headwear will measure your, um, your brain signal. And then if, um, you know, uh, if you are not paying attention in the class, they would know uh, through the algorithm and tell the teacher, tell your parents. So um, yeah, so they would know what you're thinking. They would know whether you're paying attention in the class. Um, imagine that's not only at school, it applies to other things as well. Um, yeah, it's quite scary, is it? Uh, it's, well, uh, all these are actually uh, is from, some, from, from some news. If you want to find a source, I can uh, give you more information. Just talk to me afterwards. Um, and also, uh, so, as you know, the protesters, like people living in Hong Kong, very close to China and also because um, Hong Kong is still under you know, um, China, so um, they are very aware of that. And um, so they discovered this lamppost, they have civilian cameras in it. So uh, they're tear tearing them down and check um, actually the, the um, parts that is uh, using in the surveillance and the face recognition, all this is actually um, made by a company um, in Shanghai. So. Um, they are very scared and uh, suspect that those may be um, the government trying to um, monitor people. So yeah, it's real because um, I won't go into details here because this is, again, is another uh, discussion, but uh, maybe you have already heard about it, uh, the Uyghurs in, in China, in Xinjiang, or the local court, uh, East Turkestan. Um, uh, they have been sent to, um, Re-education cam, um, yeah, so uh, I recommend you um, read the news. I won't go into details here. So uh, there is a saying um, in Hong Kong that's called uh, Today Xinjiang, Tomorrow Hong Kong. So, um, so what happened is just, this is just like two days ago, or three days ago, um, the Communist Party, they have the four, fourth um, planetary sessions. So they have a, uh, all the leaders were having a meeting and they, after that, of course, they would, you know, report to the press what their strategy is for the future years. And they said that um, one of the things that they said is to um, want to prioritize um, the uh, central government's authorities over Hong Kong and also um, boots the efforts to safeguard the national, national security. So, yeah. It feels powerless. What can we do? It seems like the government is having a lot of power, um, but um, there's something that I see a small beam of light because I think um, liter literacy, knowledge is power. Because in the old days, you know, um, only the rich and powerful, they can be educated. They have the money to buy books. They're the only one who can control the society. And well, nowadays we are very lucky. Um, we are in a developed country. Mo mo most of us, you know, can go to schools. We can read and write. But because we are in the 21st century and all these technologies is, are so important, what does it mean? I think we have to be uh, AI and tech literate. Um, of course, I believe that all of us sitting here, we we are, you know. We know Python in different levels. We can code, um, but um, are we literate enough? How much do we know about all these AI and machine learning and all these things? And how about our kids? How about people, the general public? How about our relatives, people around us? Do they, are they you know, tech literate enough? If the only rich and powerful, they have access to all these technology, imagine there is a, a company, like, imagine we are the only people who know how to code in this room. There is a company that they have the money to hire all of us. Then they have control of all these technology. Um, so they have control over, you know, they can do all this surveillance, all these things. So, um, yeah, it's not good. I think to ensure that uh, the public have the tech 
literacy. First of all, we have to have the um, internet freedom <laughs> of speech. So we have to keep the, our internet free. It's you know, kind of a contrast between um, what's happening in China. Um, critical thinking, because um, there's two of fake news on the internet. We have to be critical about what we read. Um, open source, of course, open source um, is, you know, it's like sharing of knowledge. You know how people make this tech happen, right? And Python, <laughs> because Python is open source and it's so easy to code. A lot of people are teaching kids uh, Python in school. So for our next generation, maybe learning Python is to become code literate. So what can you do to protect our future? I believe that I don't have time for questions, but this is the end of my talk. Uh, feel free to talk to me afterwards outside. Um, and I will be here for maybe an hour or so before I left. So um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.